Hi everyone and welcome to Traveling Misnets. My name is Pia and I am, as always, so very happy that you're joining me here today for a little chat about yarn and knitting. I do have a couple of finished objects today, the first of which I am wearing. It is my bestie thing. I'm going to just stand up so that I can talk about it and you can see it in a little more detail than you can when I'm sitting here. Okay, so here she is, my bestie thing. It was named by Karen, the Casarina girl on Instagram. If you don't follow Karen, I'm sure most of you do, but if there's someone out there not following her, you need to go to Instagram and check out her profile. She has the most amazing aesthetics. But anyway, she named this Vesti thing. I made my first uh, edition of this back in fall and I have been wearing it like crazy. I mean, it's, I have really been enjoying this one, but in wearing it, I could also see that there were some little kinks that I just wanted to uh, work out. And I have done this on my second edition Vesti thing. This time I have made a pattern for it. It has been sent out into testing. So hopefully, hopefully the pattern will be ready within the foreseeable future. But yeah, it is this hugely oversized cropped top with short sleeves, which is why I wasn't sure if this was a t-shirt or a sweater or a vest. I am using it as a vest. I am using it over shirts like today. I'm also using it over tees and I am using it over my jackets over a leather jacket or a blazer. It is just amazing. It just adds this little extra warmth and coziness to my outfit, but it also adds some interest. So some of the things that I have changed, uh, I have added buttons. Hi, miss. I have added buttons to the sides. The first one was just open, but I thought uh, buttons would be really nice because then I can uh, button or unbutton it as I see fit for the outfit that I'm wearing. I have also, yeah, the first thing I changed was that I uh, switched it around so that I knit it top down rather than bottom up. And I will say for a construction like this, it doesn't really matter. You don't get uh, some of the main benefits from knitting top down that you can try the garment on as you go. It's just that, yeah, I, I like to have all the interesting stuff going on in the beginning, all of the shaping, and then just having some plain knitting to do after. But yeah, I have added quite a lot of shaping. I have added some short rows to uh, shape the neck so it doesn't come up too far. Uh, I have added some short rows to the sleeves. As you can see, the sleeves actually, they, they follow the line of the slanting shoulders. I often find that when you have these slanting shoulders and you pick up for the sleeves and knit those down. If you don't do something, there's going to be, uh, th this line is going to be broken so that the sleeves will continue out, straight out, like flapping up. But I have added short rows to the sleeves. Uh, I have also, yeah, slanted the shoulders, not by using short rows, uh, but in the cast on, I am uh, slanting the shoulders. With this construction, uh, you end up with having uh, the, the shoulders that needs to be seamed. And I was thinking about just grafting them together uh, so that it would be, uh, would appear seamless. But I instead decided to go with this 
three needle I cord bind off. That's a technique I have never tried before, but I thought, well, if you can do a three needle bind off and you can do an I cord bind off, why wouldn't you be able to, to just combine those two techniques? So I did, and I really like the look. I think it looks really pretty with this I cord bind off up here. I've also tried a new cast on um, for the neckline and it it really looks like an Italian or tubular cast on, but it is way easier to work. I'm going to include all of the instructions and a tutorial in the pattern, but it is basically that you cast on half the number of stitches that you're going to need. And then on the first round, you purl the stitches that you cast on, and then you knit a stitch under uh, the, the cast on edge. Uh, that is a, um, a technique that I saw on Instagram. I have then added a few steps to it just to make sure that it has enough stretch to be able to be used in a neckline because I want to be able to pull this over my head. Um, for the bind offs, I have been using Anki Strix Invisible Bind Off. It's available on YouTube. Just search Anki Strix Invisible Bind Off. It is so beautiful and so easy to work. Again, this is not super stretchy, but it doesn't matter so much in, in this sweater. Uh, also, I have just gotten into the habit of always going up three to four needle sizes when I'm using that bind off. The material that I am uh, using in the in this vesty thing is I wanted something that was relatively light uh, and I wanted something that was rustic and toothy enough that it didn't uh, just drape and, and just grew out of control. This is, I think it's called Fisherman's Rip uh, in English, Helpetent in Danish, which would be half brioche. So it looks like brioche on the right side and it looks like this on the back side. What I really love about this stitch is that you just knit every other row and then um, on the other rows you are kind of just doing rib only you knit in the stitch below but it is so easy it is so incredibly easy of course it does take time all kinds of brioche uh, or mosaic stitches does take time because you have uh you you have a lot of rows your row gauge is really big because you kind of knit the same stitch twice but yeah, I chose yarn from Gan Specialisten. I have talked about them so many times uh, on this podcast. It's the Danish company that rescues yarn uh, from the fashion industry and resells it to hand knitters at very, very reasonable prices. For this one, I have used their Italian Merino, which is an untreated Merino, and I have used their mohair. Uh, and again, that was to make sure that I had a fabric that was fluffy and cozy and nice, but also that I had a yarn that had enough toothiness to it, it that was rustic enough that it would carry itself well and not just grow completely out of control and, and be all droopy and overly drapey. So, yeah my new vesti thing i am loving this one too i did leave my old vesti thing over in texas so i have one over there i'm probably gonna need another one wouldn't it look great in a black with white stripes it really would i am just gonna show you the yarns that i used for my vesti thing as I said, Italian Merino from Gant Specialisten. 
I use these two colors together. One is called coffee and the other is called black. And it is a, um, is it a sport weight? Yeah, it's a sport weight merino. I am holding two strands of sport weight together. And then I am, uh, let me just show you, you can see it is, it is a relatively fine yarn, but it, it is a true sport weight. I'm holding these two together and then I am holding them with some mohair, which is this mohair in the colorway truffle. And this is a very, very fine mohair. Let me see if I can even hear it. Here we are. It is a very, very thin and fine mohair. You can see it here. So I am holding two strands of this together with the two strands of the sport weight merino. I am knitting everything on needle size five millimeters, which is probably an US eight, if I'm not totally mistaken. So yeah, uh, this mohair is not your typical silk mohair. It is not sold as a silk mohair. It is sold as a brushed mohair. And it is, and I'm going to check the label just to make sure I get it right. It is 20% mohair, 50% acrylic, and 30% polyamide. So it is not your typical silk mohair, which is also reflected in the price. But I think that it, it gives a really nice fabric. Uh, it does give some floof, but not this powder puff floof. Um, more like a little cozy floof. I am really enjoying this marine, uh, this mohair. And I, I have enough for sure for another project. I do have another finished object this week. I finished a hat for my granddaughter Isabella. I'm just gonna pop a photo here of her wearing the hat and cozying up with the Misa. This hat is made out of dog hair, or not entirely. It is spun up, this yarn that I used for the hat, spun up of Polworth and dog hair. On this tag, it says Miss, and I really wish it was because Isabella has been so excited for the idea of having a hat made out of Miss. She has been combing and brushing Miss for hours. They have had a good time, those two. And every time she would bring the hair to me and, and we would weigh it. And it was so exciting. When were there going to be enough for a hat? And we were almost there when we moved. We moved from up here uh, where I have my craft room. We also have a tiny studio apartment uh, down into our main house, which had been renovated. And during that move, the bag of dog hair disappeared. I have no idea where it's at. We have been searching high and low for it because it really pained me and I didn't have the heart to tell Isabella that I hadn't been able to take better care of the hair that she collected. So Sweet Sen, who spun the yarn for me, she got some hair from a dog that has the same color as Miss. So it is almost Misa yarn. It is such a beautiful yarn. As you know, hand spun yarn, it is just special. It is of course uh, a little thick and thin as a hand spun yarn is wont to be. If I wanted a perfectly spun and even yarn, then I'd go for a commercial yarn. This this way you can really see the mind and the heart of the person spinning it. This is so special. This is so, so special. And it was such a pleasure to knit with it. It was such a pleasure to see the hat on Isabella. She was so happy with it. 
she was proud she picked a pom-pom to put on top and she was just loving that hat the thing with uh, yarn made from dog hair is you can tell that it's it's fussy it it does have a halo but once it is knitted up and as soon as it gets warm if you're wearing the hat the hair will just stand up it will be amazing it is i yeah it surprises me every time i see it it's like wow wow it is so 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 beautiful and isabella loves the hat she is so proud of her misa hat uh, she was very excited to see if her own dog at home would react to the hat and actually i was kind of also expecting Misa to react to the hat, but not at all. De like, not at all. She never notices my knitting, which is probably a good thing. But I did think maybe she would react to this because, of course, it will smell a little bit like dog, but she, <laughs> she does not care. She, she is not the kind of dog who cares a lot. She cares about yeah, cuddling and cozying up and being close together. And that's about it. That's her range of interests. I am working on another hat for Isabella's dad. And I am keeping it in this uh, project bag from Knitwear by Maki. This was the one that she created for our fourth knit-a-thon. It is just so pretty. I love her bags, but you've been hearing me talking about those bags forever and ever. I'm not going to bother you today. Isabella's dad, my son, just got his hunter's license this year, which is kind of a big deal here in Denmark. It's, it's a process uh, with a lot of classes that you take and you have a test and so on and so forth. He now has his hunter's license and he has been uh, out with some friends on a couple of occasions. When we were in Texas, he called me, Mom, don't you have a white hat? I need a white hat. We're going hunting this morning and there's snow everywhere. I need a white hat. I was like, I don't have a white hat. So I am, of course, making a white hat for him. It's his birthday on Wednesday. So I am going to give him a white hat, maybe also uh, an army green hat. I don't know, olive green. I don't know. Time will tell, but for sure he's going to get his white hat. I am making it just like I made my own black hat, just with uh, a little more stitches. I have cast on 80 stitches on size 6 millimeter needles, and I am holding two strands of this drops lima which is uh 50 percent i'm pretty sure it's 50 50. uh of course i can't read it but close to 50 50 alpaca and wool so this is a very very warm yarn it is not as drapey as alpaca yarns often are which is why i am okay using it in a hat I'm doing two by two ribbing, uh, and then I am gonna do, again, the crown decreases, uh, decreasing only on one side of five stitch markers so that I get this star or swirly crown on the hat. I think I'm gonna use close to 200 grams of yarn. Uh, this is a very thick hat. Uh, and he has a large head, as do I. But yeah, this is this is a wonderful project. I love hat knitting. It is small and portable and very, very easy and not as fitly as socks. Socks are so fitly. This hat's, hat's for the win. So I am really enjoying this. I'm going to finish it up soon. So I'm sure that it will be ready for his birthday on Wednesday. And as I said, maybe, maybe a second hat. We'll see about that. I have 
also put in a lot of work on an old-ish whip that I had resting over in Texas. It is in this beautiful project bag from Tina Mai. She sells her bags on Instagram. She uses all kinds of old fabrics to make these gorgeous bags. And the whip that I had waiting over in Texas was my Kalatsu shawl. And I have, I have put in quite a lot of knitting. Of course, it's, it's on a, a too small uh, cord to even show you really, but I am, I am getting close to the finish line. I don't have a lot more to knit on this. The Kalatsu shawl is one of my older designs. It was originally made in a fingering weight yarn. I was using three different colors of fingering weight, but I decided to go ahead and make it in just one color and then in a worsted weight yarn to get like a chunky, big, lovely shawl. And it is working out exactly how I was hoping that it would work out. I am using some Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. This is the episode of the workhorse yarn, isn't it? Well, I did have the dog. This is not a workhorse yarn. This is a precious, precious, precious yarn. But yeah, uh, Wool of the Andes worsted in the uh, cobblestone heather colorway. I am just knitting away on it. I it when I was in Texas in the fall, I got the idea to make this shawl. I cast on and I knit what halfway into the lace section, and then I decided to leave it over there because my suitcase. I had a full suitcase with only yarns and knitting projects, so I was like. Yeah, I need to sort through some of this. So I just left this behind in Texas. So um, yeah, when I came back one evening, I was craving lace. I, I was craving texture and um, something that would like demand my attention. So I picked this up. I finished the lace portion. And then since then, I have been knitting while I am reading. Um, Stocking that stitch back and forth. Perfect for knitting and reading. The only thing that I have done differently than in the pattern is uh, this section. There's a couple of these. Uh, there is one on either side of the lace portion, one here. And I think I'm also going to finish the show with this section. In the original pattern, this is a color work band. But uh, I just made um, some, actually, moss stitch, knit one for one, and it looks, it looks really nice. I like it. There's just a little bit of interest. I do think I am going to, in the original pattern, you just finish up with, with a, is it a four by one ribbing, something like that. But I think I'm going to finish it off with another one of these sections. And then I am going to do what I did to my friend to friend shrug. I'm going to do one row where I knit um, into the stitch two rows below. I'm, I'm going to add that pearl bump on. I'm going to add that pearl bump from two rows below up on the needle and knit it together with the stitch on the needle. That will help the shawl, uh, the edge not to roll. And then I'm going to do Jenna's surprisingly stretchy bind off from the wrong side. I think that's going to be a really neat ending to this shawl. And I am pretty sure that it's not going to curl when I finish it off like that. But yeah, I want to finish this because this is a lot of coziness and warmth to put around me. Here in Denmark, it is not nearly as cold as it was over in Texas. Uh, Texas was crazy. That was, I, 
I am going to miss our early morning walks uh, when we would, Peter and I would take Tyson out for a little walk uh, on the trail that runs right behind the, the kids' apartment. And it was a lovely time, nice way to start the day, but it was minus 14 Celsius, which is, I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit. It's cold. It's freezing cold. Water freezes at zero Celsius. So, yeah, cold. I'm going to miss those walks. Uh, and this one would have been perfect to wear on those occasions. Uh, let me see. I have, of course, also been crocheting on my, uh, what is it called? Moss stitch blanket. Oh, my brain is not really here. It is in the bag that a wonderful viewer and friend made for me, Bitten. And yeah, I am still enjoying this immensely. Let us just see, because I did place a marker. Here we go. This is where I was last week. So I, it's not a lot, but something. I did crochet on this, uh, on the flight. I brought two projects because why not? Uh, but I did crochet on this while watching the Barbie movie. I really wanted to love that movie. I know I'm pretty late to the party, but yeah, I, I, I often am. The way that we live doesn't give much opportunity uh, to go see a movie, but then I catch up on the long plane rides. I really wanted to love the Barbie movie and I did, I, I had a good time. I mean, I, I do not regret spending the time watching. I did have a good time. They have some amazing points and, and those rants about what it's like being a woman, they, they were priceless, but yeah, I don't know. It didn't really do it for me, but I was entertained and I did do a bit of crochet. This is still my go-to relax project. It's, I don't know, there's something about crocheting, just stitching away. Um, because this is, this is so simple and, and there's not like a set goal. I need to finish it by so-and-so. It is just pure pleasure working on it. Last thing I want to show you is a dream knit. Because I went to McKinney Knittery right before we left Texas. I, I was actually going because I needed to pick up the bag that the Nisse gave me for Christmas, it hadn't arrived yet. So instead, I got, let's take it one at a time, and they're beautiful bags. I mean, the McKinney Nittery, they have the best bags. I got some Ito Sensei. I have been wanting to try this yarn for a long time. This year for Christmas, I got four copies of the same knitting book. So I returned three and I decided to spend that money on something special. Uh, not just often when, when you return uh, a gift, it's just that that money just goes back into your everyday money. I decided I wanted to spend it on something special. So. Uh, two of the books went into some Ito Sensei and another thing that I'm going to show you soon. I do think that I am going to pair it with this Noro. This is probably going to be the most luxurious garment that I have ever made. This is going to be beautiful, I'm sure.
I am debating which pattern to make. If I'm going to make the in and out raglan, which I know I'm going to be casting on the in and out raglan because I am knitting it together with Ina. Again, Instagram Ina, uh, Ina Holst. Her account is really worth looking at too. Her and Karen probably have some of the most inspiring accounts. They are amazing makers and the way they style their knits and wear their knits. I'm going to link those accounts in the description box below here together with everything else that I have been talking about. But yeah, uh, together with Ina, we are going to knit the in and out raglan, which is a sweater recipe developed by Ivana over from the Republic of Me. Going to link that channel as well, just in case you don't know it. Amazing channel. Uh, so either I'm going to do that or I'm... I think I'm going to do that. It, because the in and out raglan is a very, very simple and basic sweater. So the yarn would really, uh, would be able to shine. There would be nothing disturbing uh, the yarn. It could just shine on its own. So that's probably what I'm going to do. If any of you want to join me and Ina as we knit our way through the in and out, please do. Uh, let me see your progress and your yarn choices on Instagram. That would be so much fun. If you tag me uh, at missknits.dk, then I'm able to see your photos. And also, uh, I, will, uh, I will be notified the way the algorithm works recently it i can't really figure it out but for sure i don't see everything from the people that i follow so if you want to knit together with us tag me and uh, we can knit the in and out raglan together i'm really excited for that pattern it looks so pretty when ivana is wearing it so that's going to be a lot of fun the other thing that i got at the mckinney knittery is uh, the Coco Knits Rustic Linen Four Corner Bag. This is uh, pre-sewn, wow. This is pre-sewn linen cloth that you then wash uh, to get this crinkly linen-y look. And then you add these uh, leather handles. It's going to be so cool, like the coolest project bag ever. Of course, it's not going to close. It's not going to be the kind of project bag that you can just uh, bring everywhere, but it's going to be the kind of project bag that's going to look really cool just sitting on the couch. So um, this is absolutely on my to-do list for this weekend. And then I think... I am going to finish the hat and the shawl because they're so close to being finished. But then I am going to cast on the in and out raglan by Ivana from the Republic of Me. That was it for the creative content this week. Before I start talking about what has been going on uh, outside of my project bags, I just want to remind you of the Spring Knitathon, which will be on April 6th. If you've done a knit-a-thon before, you have a pretty good idea about uh, what to expect from it. We're not going to change things up. We are going to go with what we all know and love. If you haven't done a knit-a-thon before, maybe you want to go back and watch the episode that I have on this channel that is called Knit-a-thon Survival Guide. That will give some tips uh, on how to put together the perfect knit-a-thon experience for you because obviously you don't have to knit or crochet for 24 hours of course not that would be ridiculous um, what you do is you you spend the time that you can and that you want to spend and you enjoy the fun and the friendship the community and all of the uh, podcasters that are going to go live. I have 
a handful that have already signed up to do it. If you have a podcast and you want to contribute to the entertainment, please let me know. My email address is in the description box below the video, together with links to everything else that I've been talking about during this episode. But yeah, life-wise, we left Texas on Saturday. We um, went up to the McKinney Nittery so I could get my linen bag and the Ito Sensei. And then we more or less drove to the airport from there. And of course, we are missing our little ones terribly. We're also missing Texas food. But that's mainly because I do the cooking when we're in Denmark. Not a cook, but... We did have a wonderfully uneventful flight coming back from Texas. As I mentioned, I was watching the Barbie movie. We did get quite a lot of sleep also, which was nice because when we came home, we wanted to spend time with friends and with family. We have been doing that. It has been awesome. I have been watching Hunger Games together with my granddaughter. I was a little hesitant, is this too much for her? But then again, she does watch The Hobbit, uh, Lord of the Rings. So I was like, eh, she's going to be fine. She was fine. Uh, we are probably going to watch number two, Catching Fire. I guess we're going to watch that one tonight. I also spent a lovely afternoon with my grandson, Victor. He, has, he, he loves going to the library. And he lives in uh, in the next city over, so usually he will go to his library. Uh, but uh, he he was very curious to know about my library. So I picked him up from kindergarten the other day and we went to my library, found a lot of good books. We spend a lot of time there just hanging out, playing and having a good time which is probably the headline for this week, uh, playing, hanging, hanging out and having a good time. Peter will be leaving for Dubai very soon, so I'm going to be on my own, which is probably going to turn into some kind of a nitcation. I am not mad about that for sure, but I'm of course going to miss him. I do have my work lined up for me. I definitely, definitely want to assemble this project back. I want to finish a couple of projects so that I can cast on my in and out raglan. But yeah, that is something to look forward to. I hope you have something good to work on and something good to look forward to. Until I see you again, stay safe, stay happy, and keep knitting. <laughs>